Um, just a quick update, and uh, well, not an update really. It's a painting guide. Uh, there's been quite a bit of interest in um, figures that I've painted and how I paint them, uh, uh, and I just thought I might just do a quick uh, how I paint me building sort of thing. So this is a, a Will's kit that I, I bought. Um, it's just a bus shelter. Um, nice little brick brick pan with a bit of wood on it, etc. As well as your slate roofing. And I thought, well, you know, it's a it's a good chance to actually show you a few bits and pieces and how, you know, how to paint different textures, etc. And stuff. Um, so starting off. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm hoping this video works. You won't believe what I'm using as a, uh, as a ha as a base to actually hold my phone on, so I can actually t <laughs> take the video. We and I've got like two hands free. Yay! <laughs> Usually I've only got one, uh, but anyway, like I say, uh, you won't believe what I've just rigged up to do this video. So you know, uh, if it works, it works. If it don't, then hey oh. Sorry about it, but you're going to be looking at this and it's going to be sort of like uh, wrong side up. Right, so getting on with it. Basically, I've just built the kit up. Um, plastic it is, so I've used uh, polish cement. Um, and the first thing, as you can notice, this colour here is this, which is basically a, a nice oatmeal type colour. Uh, basically painted onto it so that it, it goes into all the recesses so it looks like it's uh, actual cement. So first thing I'm going to do after that is basically I'm going to get myself a, a, a nice earthy brown. Earthy brown you say? Mm. Well basically it's going to be a brick texture so this is how I, I do my bricks. Okay so I'll just give it the uh, give it the tub a quick shake and uh, I usually work out at cap uh, because it, it's, I've got loads of pallets like but I usually like using my pallets for inking you know, or if I, I need to water stuff down. Decent sized brush, uh, it's not too big but it's just so that I can handle it. Not a lot of paint on my brush as you can see, not a lot on there, Let's just see if I can give it a close up, not a lot there. And then gently, this is where the pallet does come in handy. All I'm going to do is just quickly just get most of the paint off. It's sort of like a semi-dry brush what I'm going to be doing. And uh, uh, then, let me get me, uh, that's it. Then basically all I'm going to do now, just trying to make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing. Right, is I'm just going to drag the brush slightly over brick as it sticks up so I'm not actually hitting it very heavily I'm just lightly brushing it now this basically picks out the bricks as you can see and it also leaves the uh, the cement inside the recesses so it's just nicely done like this ok I'll do a little bit more so you can actually see it going on and then uh, what I'm going to do then is pause the video and uh, get the rest of it done so you can actually see it rather than watching me paint for hours and hours and hours and getting bored and falling asleep if you're not already listening to my voice. <laughs> so basically, like I say, I mean this one here, it's just tucked under slightly so I'm going to take that the other way. Here we go. That's it. And like I say, all I'm doing is lightly brushing over so as it picks out the detail of the bricks. I mean, there's another little brick there that's been recessed just in the bottom corner, if you can see it. That's just touching over it. Now, I'm going to be using a fair few different colours on this. Usually I use about three shades, uh, uh, but I'll see how it goes. Because I've not actually used a really dark brown on this. Uh, I mean, like I say... It's that colour there, the earth brown, I can't, I don't know, there you go, earth brown. Okay, that's what I'm using. Now, obviously it's going to need to be reddened up and oranged up as it's highlighted. 
I mean, as you know, if you've ever been to a builder's merchants, there are absolutely shed loads of different coloured bricks. Now, at the time I'm trying to do this, which is sort of like just before war, um, probably mid-war or whatever for my layout. Uh, uh, see, because just to explain my layout, I'm wanting to do like a, a fair period in time, sort of like pre-war, wartime-ish, so that you can get all them nice little things such as um, like horses and carts and the old vintage trucks and stuff like that. Uh, because I do like that, same as the uh, old steam wagons. I've actually got an old steam wagon kit and an old steam roller that I'm hoping to put on my, on my uh, layout somewhere as well. So, I mean, that's all to come. But, uh, uh, you know, that's that's where my interest lies. I like steam engines. I can't stand the diesel. <laughs> I'm sorry, lads, if you're a diesel fanatic, but diesels just aren't, aren't for me. I, li I like steam. Uh, it just... The engines just seem so alive to me. It's just unreal, and I love them to bits. But uh, uh, that's that's my choice. I mean, you know, I'm not not big begrudging guys that actually like diesels. I think the only diesel I do like is <laughs> is the old Deltic. Uh, uh, but uh, no, it's it's just my choice. I, pr I love steam engines. I really do. The sight, the sound, the smells. Just can't beat it as far as I'm concerned. But hey ho. But like I say, I'm not going to begrudge anybody. But that's the time period I'm looking at. I might have a diesel on my layout, uh, just a little shunter. Uh, but I'm I'm going for, you know, steam mainly on me on my layout. We'll see. I can't see me getting any diesels, but you never know. It's up to you guys uh, to try and uh, convince me. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, back to painting. As you can see, I've nearly done this. It it doesn't take long at all. And basically all I'm doing, like I say, is just lightly brushing over. And where you can see, like here, there's a bit of the sort of cement colour there. It's uh, uh, it's getting colour covered. So what I'm going to do, I'll give you a quick show of it now, so you can actually you can actually see it. So I'm just moving around back so I can actually see it myself. Yep, so there you go. You can see what I've done there now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video and finish it off and then I'll come back to you. Okay? So, I'm back in a sec. Okay then, so I'm back. Now, um, first of all, the earth colour, I have actually put a bit of black in it uh, just to darken it up because as I were painting it, I wasn't liking the, uh, the lighter colour. I always preferred a darker shade. So, uh, I thought the... the, the uh, the earth shade had been dark enough but obviously uh, it weren't to my liking so anyway painted it up that's the uh, the first coat now uh, don't worry about it yeah it is a little bit smudgy but it will actually uh, start falling into place as uh, more coats of paint goes on and I start actually painting the other bits and pieces such as the wood and the roof etc so nothing to worry about plus there's always the usual uh, weathering I like to do as well which uh, I might actually cover in this uh, video if dependent on how long it gets so uh, to this darker mix uh, like I say I mean if you can I don't know if you can work, work that colour out but it is like a really dark brown uh, but it's not a mega black brown so I'm just going to add some uh, of this burnt sienna to it which is you know uh, the uh, deco art one okay so just put a blob on there now I'm not going to mix it all into the uh, the colour reason being is is because I want to get lighter shades of the same one so it's uh, the same base colour, I should say. So, uh, what I'm doing, I'm just actually mixing it so that I get that lighter shade. I'm looking for something like a, a dark brick red colour to start with, which is it's turning to just on this corner at Palette. I don't know if you can work, you can make out the actual two differences in the colour between the dark one and this lighter one, but. That's uh, that's going nicely, so it is actually giving a nice shade. So, I mean, one thing I, I will say, um, I mean, uh, 
probably you probably all do it anyway. Uh, but one of the things I find is the key to success with painting is looking after your brushes. It's one of the main things that uh, I've always learnt over the years I've, I've been painting. Look after your brushes, they'll last you a long time. Um, also, I find that uh, camel hair brushes um, suit my style of painting rather than the, uh, well, the, uh, like a plasticky type th uh, thing, the, the horrible brushes, they, they always seem to bend up at the tip and they're not very good and they're very very hard to keep and I just really don't like painting with them, they don't suit my style of painting so uh, um, you know I don't use them, these I always use are, that are, are sort of camel hair so again, same again with this, I'm just going to drop the load off the brush and basically just start lightly going over now it doesn't have to be as heavy as what it was on the first coat as you can see I'm just flicking it over and it will leave residue of paint on there so there we go Giving it a nice uh, colour. I think I might start putting a bit of red into this. Just give me a second. This is burgundy rose. It's uh, more of a brick red, more of a brick red. But I'm going to mix that into the uh, into the mix just to uh, try and get a little bit more red colour up because it's uh, not catching. I might put a little bit too much black in the mix. You know, just on the shake. We might actually be. Uh, yeah, it is. Bump it up a little bit. I mean, some of these are quite a few years old, and I mean, quite a few years old. Some of them's like between ten and fifteen year old, which is sounds ridiculous, but you know, I mean, uh, I do have a lot of paint. I don't know if you've seen me uh, tubs, but tell you what, let's have a look at that there. Bang it on that brush. There we go. That's it. But, uh, yeah, these these acrylics are very good paints. Uh, I've always liked using these. Let's bring a bit more of that to burnt sienna in as well. Yeah, that's better, as you can see, giving it a good mix. Don't need to put much water in it, I mean obviously under the light it will start drying out, but uh, uh, I only add water when I need to. I mean there is quite a lot of life in this uh, in this mix at the moment, without it drying out. Let's clear that brush off, Most of it off. Here we go. So back to the work again. That's better. That's a lot better. As you can see, it's, it, yeah, I can actually see it changing and uh, highlighting. Right, if you can pick it up on that, it's. Uh, one of the worst things about uh, videoing and rather than actually looking at something in daylight or you know in, in decent uh, light is that they don't actually pick up a lot of the colour pigmentation especially when it's you know just a light pigmentation because obviously um, as even though I've started on a, a sandy coloured background the brick itself with that dark brown 
it actually dulls the colours down. Uh, uh, one thing I've always learned when you're painting, if you paint on a on a black background, it it dulls the colours. A white background actually highlights the colours, and grey is a nice intermediate medium. So when painting figures and stuff, I always try and paint on a grey background. Um, if I do need a brighter colour, I will actually you know do a really light one or add you know uh, paint over the area in white and then add the base colour. Uh, simple reason is it will. You know, um, brighten the colour up, or on the opposite side, if you want to dull the colour, putting the black on it first on the grey, and then painting your colour, you get the opposite result. So it's, it's just a matter of undercoats, etc. Um, when you look at things, it seems like um, once you once you've actually got your colours and that. It, and lightening up and lightening up. I mean, this might have about five or six different shades on, and then what I'll do is actually just tie it all together and uh, basically put some washes over it, like I do with figures. If you, you know, if you've seen my vi figure painting video, and um, washes are really, really good for multitude of things. You know, like like I say, with weathering, etc. They're also good for actually tying colours together. So if you've got something that's gone from dark to a really light colour and you put a wash on it, then uh, basically it pulls it all together because as you're painting, uh, well, as I paint with these, uh, it's, it's, it's lighter and lighter colours but less and less weight on the brush. So it's only putting, you know, finer and finer amounts of pigmentation that was a bit uh, stupid that one finer and finer bits of pigmentation on the actual highlights so then when you put the uh, that's it so I'm just trying to blend rest of wall in with that splodge what I've done there so it doesn't look out of place uh, um, basically it just ties them all together and it looks more natural rather than you know, just blobbing paint on an open foot best. So it's it's just a matter of getting your mind's eye sorted, looking at buildings and stuff as it as as they are in 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 world, and basically trying to replicate that in paint, and uh, you know see how it goes. But again, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to actually stop stop the video while I get this finished off. There's only a little bit less left to do. Uh, and I'll catch you in a sec. I'm just trying to keep it as short as I can this video, that's all. Okay, so that's it done there for now with that colour. Uh, we're done, that's it. Alright, um, now I've also mixed in the palette uh, the next colour I'm going to put on, which is this here. Um, that's a little tad of this just to lighten it up a bit. Um, a bit of this uh, true red. Okay, which is that colour, and then also uh, back to the uh, burnt sienna because I will be doing a coat of burnt sienna uh, uh, after this one. Okay, so again, I mean, clean my brush out, just give it a quick wipe, bring up the point again, and uh, uh, away we go again. So, again, just a little bit of paint on there. Now, what I'm going to be doing is uh, more of a light dry brushing so obviously just taking off the main amount of the paint onto a bit of tissue like so making sure that my brush is still loaded but not heavily loaded and then again just very very gentle light strokes which I'm hoping you can actually pick this up on the video as it's highlighting on the brick. Now I'll do all this gently first and then what I'm going to do is I'll go over the same area again just put a little bit more over the area just so as it builds up just slowly but surely and just keep doing that until I get to a, a stage where I'm happy with the colour of the brick and I've still got the colour underneath because obviously as we're building it up we're trying to build the uh, the weathering into it before I actually start with the uh, 
wash weathering, which is basically me, you know, uh, algae and things like that, what I brush on there and bits of extra muck. Uh, so what I'm doing is trying to actually get the, the brick looking weathered first. And uh, once that's done, then obviously I'll go on to my washing. So that's it. I mean, you can see how it's coming along there doing this. I mean, obviously your own mind's eye, you know what, what pleases you and what doesn't. And I tend to just go for what pleases myself and take it from there. Uh, I mean, people might not like what they look like. You know, but I'm happy with the results. If I'm not happy with the result, I'll, you know, it'll be, oh dear. Let's try again next time and go on from there. But um, you'll learn it, you know, in time. Um, I mean, some of you out there are probably excellent painters at buildings already and probably teach me a few things, which, you know, if if you are good at it and you have got some videos, you know, pop it up bottom of uh, uh, this video in the in in the actual comments I'd love to see it because uh, I'm always looking out for new techniques and ways to actually paint things so I mean sometimes I'll, I'll look at look at somebody's uh, work and uh, you know follow what they've been doing but I'll also go off at a tangent and try something else myself using the first basics of their techniques etc or whatever so it's, it's just adding strings to your bow basically as uh, an old teacher used to say to me so but there we go that's uh, that's coming along I think you'll agree I'm just hoping you can actually pick up the colours and the bits that are already in there so I'm going to finish this off and then uh, come back to you again ok then so as you can see I've put that on and uh, basically got the uh, the colour I, I've been looking for. So the next thing I'm going to do is use this, the uh, Burnt Sienna, which is on its own. And because I'm going to be using it on its own, so I'm not wasting a lot of paint, what I'm going to be doing is knocking a lot of, uh, not a lot, knocking a lot of the paint off on the actual palette I've got there, but actually painting out of the pot. So I must stress in between each of these uh, coats, I'm also uh, colours. I'm also actually uh, cleaning my brush off in the water. So, there we are. Let's load it onto that. Again, quick wipe off with that. And here we go again with a light brushing. Okay. So as you can see, very lightly brushing, but the bricks are actually picking up that paint. And like I say, all it is is a light brush. There is going to be another coat on this, which is going to be a lighter colour, but that's going to be even finer. So all I'm doing is just trying to really pick out the ridges and bumps on these bricks. So it actually gives a nice texture, a colour and feeling a depth on this and that's more on there there we go so once that's all done I should be back again so Ok then peeps, so I've already mixed this uh, last coat up, this again is the raw sienna and a little bit of foam. Um, now this, like I say, is going to be the top coat, so all I'm going to do is very very lightly brush it on again um, over this uh, brick and uh, just give it a very very light highlight, as you can see there, it is already lightening it up a lot so it's just a matter of being very very steady with it and use it really gently just to uh, hit the very high stages of the uh, the brickwork so you get a nice finish to it so it looks like it's been there quite a while 
Uh, I mean, I was thinking as I was uh, painting it before I actually, you know, switched the video back on. It basically comes out like the old Victorian red brick, uh, especially when it's been weathered for a while. Uh, how this this actual bunch of colours come together. So, you know, that's that's basically what I'm aiming at. Aiming at is that sort of colour. So, like I say, I shall finish this off and. Uh, show you the end result in a short well on the video it'll be a second so I'll speak to you soon all right so hopefully there you can see the uh, different colors of the brick uh, uh, and to be quite honest i do think it makes a quite a decent job you know doing that i mean yeah there's still weathering to go on there you know with the moss and stuff but uh, see if we can get inside there with the light yeah, it's uh, just gives that you know old impression that it's been stood there a while, and then once the other uh, washes start going on, then it will start tying it all together. But uh, next thing will be uh, the wood, and then uh, finally the roof itself, and also in there. Don't worry, I've not forgotten about that. <laughs> so speak to you soon.